The Romney campaign has given the top honor of introducing Mitt Romney tomorrow night to a rising Republican star, Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Senator Rubio joins me now. Senator, welcome. Thank Is you. Welcome to Florida. Already? Well, thank you, I think. Yeah. It's been uh, a touch and go in terms of, of the weather. Yeah. Well, obviously, we are faring much better here than uh, our poor neighbors in New Orleans. Uh, let's talk about uh, the speech, yeah. your big speech. You've been given this prime time opportunity to introduce Mitt Romney. What do you want to convey? Well, I think there's two things I hope people will take away from this convention. The first is, irrespective of how folks may feel about an issue or whether they agree or disagree with Governor Romney, I hope there's a new recognition of how successful he's been as a person in his role as a father and a husband, a member of his church, a member of his community. I think that's important to know that. And, uh, and so I hope that'll come through through this convention and into my speech tomorrow night. The second, of course, is the choice, because this election is a choice. And that's the one thing both candidates agree on. Both the president is saying that and Governor Romney is saying that. They have very different views of what government's role should be in America's economy. And I think we're going to have a good debate about that, I hope, beginning at the end of this convention and moving forward. So those are the two things I want to leave on the table tomorrow, right before Mitt Romney comes up and, and speaks. Well, the, the party has organized this to show as much diversity as possible. We saw some of the new faces, a lot of women yesterday. Just the placement out there of where the delegations are, Puerto Rico and the Marianas Islands, the District of Columbia up front, given prime, prime real estate really to show off diverse faces. Your speech, Ted Cruz, the speakers yesterday. But at the same time, Jeb Bush, one of your mentors here in Florida, I uh, was talking to David Gregory on Meet the Press about what the party really needs to do to show a bigger tent. Let's watch. Our demographics are changing uh, and we have to change not necessarily our beliefs but how we, the tone of our message and the message and the intensity of it for sure. But long term conservative principles, if they're to be successful and implemented, there has to be a concerted effort to reach out to a much broader audience than we do today. Now, Jeb Bush is going to be speaking tonight. Mm -hmm. Mitt Romney needs to do uh, much, much better among Hispanic Americans and, in fact, reach 38 percent of Hispanic Americans, which would be far better than prior Republican candidates. And his record on that, especially going back to the primaries, well, is his record on immigration is very restricted. Well, a couple things. First of all, the, the diversity is not manufactured. I mean, there, there is a governor in New Mexico, Susana Martinez. There is a governor, Brian Sandoval. There is a governor, Luis Fortuño. The, I have won my election. Ted Cruz is going to be the next senator from Texas. Uh, these are real elections, real people that got elected that happen to be of minority descent and Hispanic descent. These things happen. So that's the first thing I would say about it. The second thing is, yeah, Governor Bush is right. I mean, the party needs to do a better job of being the pro-legal immigration party, that we understand legal immigration is good for our country. A million people a year immigrate to the United States legally and permanently every single year. No other country even comes close to that. Um, so we, that's something we should be proud of. We also have to recognize that yeah, we have a broken legal immigration system that contributes to illegal immigration. And we have to recognize that we have 10, 12 million human beings in this country who do not have documents and, and are undocumented for various different reasons. And there's got to be a solution to that. It's not going to be amnesty. It's not going to be rounding up people in deporting them, but it's going to be some sort of approach that's balanced and responsible and that honors our legacy both as a nation of immigrants but also as a nation of laws. During the primary season, Rick Perry immediately got blowback from his fellow debaters uh, early in the season when he even talked about the Texas plan to give tuition breaks to, uh, hit to young people who had come from uh, illegal immigrant families. Uh, this is what Mummy said in, in just last January in an NBC debate. The answer is self-deportation, which is people decide that they can do better by going home because they can't find work here because they don't have legal documentation to allow them to work here. In our latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, 63% of Hispanic voters prefer, Mitt, uh, prefer President Obama, Obama over Mitt Romney, 63 to 28. So the party clearly has to do better. Well, part of that is a historic thing. I mean, they're, they're, Hispanics are moving into states and communities that are predominantly Democrat, and so that's how they register. I mean, it's a curious anomaly, but there are Cuban Americans that move to Miami register Republicans. The ones that go to New Jersey, like my colleague Bob Menendez, register Democrats. So that's real. Apart from that, we, did, we do need to do a better job. Every time we're talking about immigration, it can't be in the context of illegal immigration.
immigration. How about recognizing that immigration is good for America, that a legal immigration system that works is a good thing for our future. And here's the other thing to remember, and that I've consistently been talking to my colleagues about. Immigration is not a statistical issue for Hispanics. Even if you're legally here, even if you have all your documents in order, you know someone, you love someone, you work with someone who's being impacted personally by the immigration issue, and, and that impacts the way you view it, like any other issue that's personalized. What did you think of Chris Christie's speech last night? I thought it was good. Look, I think there's a theme here. The, the theme that we began with, Ms. Romney, was very clear, and that is that Mitt Romney is a very special person. Here's what our life is like, and here's how he's been as a person. He doesn't like to brag about it, but here's who he is as the person. That what Chris Christie talked about is the need for real leadership, and leadership means you don't just look at the, take a poll and decide what you're going to do or what you're going to be for. You lead, and uh, that segues to tonight, where you have someone who's going to come on the stage, Paul Ryan, who really does lead in a city, Washington, D.C., full of people that are there to be somebody. Here's somebody who's there to do something. That's called leadership. You certainly don't take on the Medicare issue to win score points in a poll. You do it because you understand that that needs to be addressed. And I think by 11 p.m. Eastern tonight, the nation will know how unique Paul Ryan is as a, as a policy visionary and as a spokesperson for our party. What about Mitt Romney's chances in Florida? Because President Obama in the latest battleground polls has pulled ahead in mm -hmm. Florida. The Medicare issue could be toxic. Uh, in Florida among the seniors. Well, it's an issue that needs to be addressed. We have three million people in the state on Medicare. One of them is my mom. And the good news is that the Republicans have a plan, uh, an idea, a couple of ideas actually, about how we can save Medicare without having to change it whatsoever for people currently in the system. It will require, however, people in my generation, in Paul Ryan's generation, for our Medicare to look different. And um, But look, if someone has a better idea, the president has a better idea on how to save Medicare, he should present it. Because if you're in, anyone who's in favor of leaving Medicare the way it is right now forever is in favor of bankrupting it. And I think seniors in Florida understand that. It was an issue that came up in my campaign here just two years ago. And it's an issue that needs to come up because we're running out of time to address it. What about the vice presidency? Any regrets that this wasn't the year for you, Marco Rubio? Well, two things. Number one, he's he made the right choice. I mean, picking Paul Ryan is going to prove to be a great selection. Already has. And I think tonight that will be affirmed. The second thing is I really did want to be in the Senate when I ran for the Senate. I didn't run for the Senate as a stepping stone to something else. And what I'm excited about, I hope, is the opportunity and the possibility of serving in a Republican majority Senate with a Republican president and a Republican House, and then voters giving us a second chance to finally do what we say we're going to do as Republicans. They gave us that chance before. We didn't quite do a good job of it. I wasn't there at the time, obviously. But if they give us a second chance to run government, we're going to get a chance to do it right. Charlie Crist endorsing Obama? Well, he has a right to do that. Uh, you know, my only observation is he's running out of parties. But, uh, but uh, you know, he has a right to do that. And, and you know, obviously, everyone will be curious to see what he says at the convention. Well, good luck to you tomorrow night. Thank we're all you. looking forward to it. I know you've driven here with your wife and kids from Miami, uh, your yeah. four kids. And if I could do that, I can give a speech. <laughs> through a storm, no <laughs> That's less. right. Thank you very much, Senator. Thanks for being with us. And speaking of storm